Hello, how are you today? I am really good, how are you? Not too bad, thanks. This show, I think, is one of the more interesting shows I've seen in a while because, you know, it comes across as something lighter, but the characters have a lot of depth. Yeah, I think one of the things that appealed to me about this show was that I thought it did and does a really skillful job of walking this line between being just fun and adventurous and exciting and being sincere and serious and taking these characters seriously and taking what they're going through seriously. And I think it's hard for a lot of shows to, to manage the relationship between those two. You know, a lot of shows want to be fun and want to be serious but don't know how to make it work together. And I think our show does a really good job of that. Well, the, the second that Ty... For me, there's a lot of fun moments with the first and second episode, but the second that you then step into your younger brother's mind, I think for me that really is a moment of, oh, okay, I'm starting to get where this is going. Like, it, you you yeah. hit a stride at that point, and it's, it's whimsical and yet dark, and yet there's so much depth to this family and the relationship with the father who's passed away. Is that um, something you saw early on in the scripts, or when did you start seeing that when you're doing the show? Yeah, I mean that was in a way the immediate appeal of the scripts, mm -hmm. and it, it is the appeal. It's one of the things that the uh, source material that the comics do so beautifully is that beneath the plot of it and beneath the the you know the color and the noise of it is this really, in the comics, is this really beautifully rendered story about what it means to grow up with grief and trauma, mm -hmm. what it means to be a kid, and then it means to be a kid becoming an adult, what it means to carry guilt. Oh, that's really the engine of the comics. Mm -hmm. And our show is different in a lot of ways than the comics, but that's not different. I think that is still the engine of our show. So hopefully, despite, uh, or behind propping up all of the fun that hopefully you're having watching it is this uh, this honesty and this, this feeling that you're, you're watching a story about people learning what it means to grow up. Mm. That's what appealed to me about it because when you're you know when you're fighting a shadow monster or going into your brother's head or whatever it is, you need to know why you need to know why it matters to you. you need to know what the stakes are you need to know why you're afraid of it or why you're eager to, you know, if, if you don't feel like you understand what it means emotionally to these characters, then the audience is just going to be, it's going to be in one ear out the other. So I think our show really does a good job of that. And especially the house is creepy and everything else about that, but there's that moment where you go in after your mother, basically, yeah, into the mirror. Uh, that, for me, captured a certain sense of kind of where the show was kind of going to because it's it's... I, th I think it was handled in a way that was different than I've seen in other shows. And it felt more visceral and actually scary to go, I wouldn't go in there. I, yeah. I guess for my mom I would, but you know, like that's... Which funny. again, I think is an interesting tone that the show finds where it's not just the like whimsy wonder of Narnia where it's like everything's amazing. There's a, some, there's a darkness and there's a, there's a fear and there's a danger and there is a feeling, I hope, because it's what we were aiming for that these are like real people right. being confronted with crazy stuff and but the people themselves are not magical We're, right. we don't have any special powers we don't have any special abilities we're totally normal kids hmm. there's nothing you know we're not like it's not like Narnia where we are like our birthright is to be kids. there's nothing <laughs> we're just kids we're just normal people and but we are motivated by wanting to protect each other and wanting to understand what's going on and wanting to understand our dad and his mm. legacy because we're all wrapped up and complicated in that so I hope that that I mean it's so potent in the comics all of that mm. so I hope that it works in our show as well when were you exposed to the comic did you know about before or did you get into it because of doing the show I I had heard of the comics before but I had never read them it was just one of those things that had slipped by me right but once I got the show I read the first couple scripts for our show first, and then I went and read all of the comics. Mm. So I had read all of the comics by the time we we started shooting. That's cool. Did you? Was there something that you know stood out for you in the comics that you're like, you know, this is a, a something that I'm looking forward to tackling? I mean, it's part of the fun is that the comics are different than our show, right? And that they are 
they're not trying the show is not trying to copy the comics it's trying to uh, add to the reality. remix it's trying to you know it's a new decade it's a new medium it's right. it's a, it's every it's very new and Joe Hill who created the comics was the biggest proponent of using the foundation and doing new things with it you know right. he already it's like he said it's like he already did that they made the comics they're done they're they're great they're out there people love them let's let's have fun with it let's let's take these ideas that are so effective and take them in new places and so when you're reading the comics I knew that, which actually gave me more permission to enjoy the comics because it was less like, oh my God, we're going no to have to do exactly right? yeah. that. <laughs> but I mean, there's so many, especially visually, Gabe's art, there's so much in the comics that's so effective. There's so many splash pages, there's so many panels that work so well. I mean, just so graphic things like Tyler as a giant standing right. in the ocean, 80 feet tall, or opening up Bodhi's head like a, like a chest, or... Um, being tangled up in thorny vines in a greenhouse. I mean, there's so many memorable images in the comics. And a lot of them have to do with keys that we haven't even introduced in season one. Right. So uh, there's a lot of room. That's cool. And the keys, the design, I mean, there's so much design in the show, but the keys really are visceral. It, yeah. It really is almost an entry point for the audience to be like, oh, these are these are like nothing I've I ever seen before. one of the things so good about the, the concept, the concept of the comics and the concept of the show is that there is, beyond the specifics of the plot or the characters, there is something just inherently fascinating about keys. Keys are interesting, right? Like when we're kids and we find an old key or we, we go into a house that the room is locked, right. there's something exciting about that. We want to know what's on the other side of something that's locked. We want to know what that weird key we found in grandma's drawer does, <laughs> right? We want There's something fascinating about the concept. And finding keys that are all designed so beautifully and trying to guess what they do before we know what they do and trying right. and trying to guess how I mean one of the things that we don't really do in season one but that you do a lot in the comics is uh, like key stacking where, oh. you, where you use one key and then another key so it's like whereas in season one we mostly just use the keys in isolation right. but what if you use the uh, music box key while you're using the head key well you're, you know what if you layer our keys on top of each other you can take them in really exciting places so again there's a lot of room in the future to take this really effective central concept and just elaborate and mm. twist and make it even more exciting and there's something inherently frightening about to me about the idea of you know when his younger brother puts the key in his neck yes that to me I mean it's it's, it's, it's visceral you'd be like oh it's funny because uh, we got so used to the idea. Right. It was almost the pedestrian. You know, right. The, okay, the head key you put in the pipe. You know, I'd forgotten about the fact that I had so many people, family members and stuff, sending me messages at that episode being like, oh my God, I can't believe, like I, my skin crawled when he started to put the key to work. It's like, there is something, and again, that's the nice thing about something finally coming out into right. the world, is that you get inoculated to stuff as you shoot because you become so familiar with it. And you forget that even just basic stuff like that has a lot of power. So it's really nice. One of the most more satisfying parts of it finally being released is that you're, you're reminded of that stuff. Right. For you working with Carlton Cuse, what's it like working with, uh, you know, he's, he's done so much already. It feels like there's a lot of room for him to even still grow from here. What, what's he like as a, I mean, creator. I love Carlton. We all, I mean, he, for someone who's so successful and prolific and who has been around and been successful for so long, um, you would never know it. I mean, he is mm. so eager to reinvent himself. He's so eager to push into new territory, to try new things. If you look at his filmography and you look at the shows he's made he doesn't repeat himself right. he pushes into new genres he works with new writers he works with new actors mm -hmm. he he i mean to think that the same person who made our show made bates motel made the strain made lost nash bridge i mean it's just like this is a crazy career you know and and to get to be part of that and it just gives a it's just fun and b he carries with him just because of who he is but also because of what he's done a, an enormous amount of confidence like mm -hmm. we not his confidence but ours it, it gives you confidence it makes it gives you assurance to That's know cool. to know that you're because he's never done anything bad you know right. and it gives you assurance to know that you're in good hands mm -hmm. and that there's a, a, a solidity and a steadiness 
and to pair pairing that kind of tried and true like you know it's going to be good with a willingness to experiment and try new things and push in new directions it's like the perfect combination That's and cool. Carlton was working with Meredith who was our co showrunner right. who has a totally different background and together they had a really amazing fusion hmm. That's cool. For you as a filmmaker yourself, do you do you pick up stuff from working with someone like him uh, because of his kind of creativity and everything else? Or yeah, I mean, one of the great things about being about acting for as long as I have is that you work with so many people, whether it's people like Carlton and Meredith or Joe or the crew that you work with every day, the other actors. Mm camera operators, DPs, production designers, costume designers, you work with so many people who have come into it with so much talent and experience and all of them have unique and fascinating histories that bring them to the point that they're at and movies are really complicated, TV is really complicated, it, they involve a lot of moving parts that have to somehow come together and work in unison and it's not really something that a lot of people, you can. it's not something you can just intuitively understand the mechanics of, Right. Uh, so the chance to see everyone in action working at such a high level um, has given me so much over the years. Hmm. And a lot of it, honestly, it's like it's it's like osmosis. You know, you don't even realize the things you're learning until it's five years down the line and you're trying to make something and you, re and you remember, like, why am I behaving this way or why am I... Why, I think that was the right way to react to that, but how did I... It's like, oh, because that and this person and this person was really good at their job and they told me this one thing. So it, it, it really is this... Like, your whole life is an ecosystem, you know? That's and cool. uh, so I feel very lucky to work with the people I've been able to work with. Well, to wrap it up, I'd like to know what what comes next for you because are you working on new projects for your own filmmaking? I always have stuff from my own kind of bubbling. I have a few different things I'm working on. Um, I mean, we're still waiting and crossing our fingers about season two of the show, which would come back sometime in the next, you know, in the near future. Um, but in the, other than that, I, I've made like a whole bunch of shorts now. I've been making my own little movies for a long time. So re I'm really building up to making my first feature. So I hope that time permitting, resources permitting, my sanity permitting that sometime in the next two years or so I'll make my first my first proper movie. That's fantastic. Well, good luck. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you. I appreciate it.